Okay, I got you, I think, this time, right? Oh, good. Yeah. yeah can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear okay, you. Okay, cool. So, awesome. Yeah. So did you just get done with working over at the radio station yourself or what? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I had a long morning. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a lot going on. I don't know if you... <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I, I, I live, I'm trapped in my house, so I don't hear anything. So, you know, I'm just kind of here. Yeah. See, I, um, completely, um, am jealous of that right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, Hey, what's going on out there? Yeah. There's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're talking now. Do you go by just crystal frost Anderson or do you go by Chrissy or what, what do you go by? Um, on the radio, I'm crystal frost. And okay. then my name is crystal frost Anderson. I, you know, from the wedding. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I, I remember you. Getting married, you know. <laughs> now, Crystal, of course, is a, uh, I guess I'm, I'm kind of like your, your long lost uncle, sort of, sort of. Yeah, I see you're an uncle. Yeah. I would put you into that category. I've got a lot of them. Yeah. Well, I grew up, I grew up with Randy Hines, of course, who, um, was your, your uncle and, mm -hmm. uh, him and I were, were best friends back in the Mount Clemens days. And of course, uh, your mom, good friends with her. Orla, yeah. yeah, and uh, known her forever. So, yeah, so actually she kind of, we kind of grew up together, actually. So there, there you go. Yeah. I, I think I know, I think I know the Heinz family since second grade, you know, and your your grandpa was my uh, Weeblow leader and your grandma was my uh, Cub Scout leader. And yeah, right. so, so we known each other for a long time. So you, I remember when you were just a little bitty baby, just, yeah. a, just a little bitty baby. So anyway, now, but the, the thing about it is that I wanted to call you for is because you've been in radio now in Traverse City area for quite a few years now, haven't you? Yeah. I mean, I think I started in 2007 Okay, and, you know, I've worked in different outfits all across, you know, Traverse City, but I've been at WTCM up north for, um, I was just doing the math today. I think it's almost nine years. Wow. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> all the radio stations I've worked at, but they're all right here in Muskegon. So, you know, I, you know, I got a couple in Grand Rapids. But anyway, um, so now is it talk radio? Yeah, so I do a morning show, country music morning show um, on our, our FM station uh, every morning from 6 a.m. until 9 a.m. And then I go over and do the talk show from 10 until noon. Oh, I remember those days. Yeah. Yep. Double duty, right? Yeah. 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 I used to do, I used to, do, I used to do a radio show on WKBZ in Muskegon where I did the morning show on the AM. It was all talk, talk, yeah. talk news. And then on the FM, I would pre-record everything and do the morning show there. <laughs> so it was like double duty there you know so that now, was, how were you fun. in two places at once did you get that question all the time no not really nobody really you know one person that listened to the fm never listened to the am and vice versa oh, right. so you know so it worked out pretty well and i used and i i was one time where i worked at two different radio stations and i used my same name but nobody seemed to question anything either so either nobody listened to me or you know it could have been that you know that's a possibility but anyway <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't that asking. <laughs> so now, what, when you talk on your show, what do you what do you talk about? What do you? I mean, what's yeah. going on? Yeah, I mean, we talk a lot of uh, a lot of news, Michigan, you know, news, regional news. Uh, I love local news; it's my favorite. Okay. You know, I I think people need to pay more attention to what's happening in their backyard, so to speak, because that's what you have more control over. You know. Right. So you want to know when you know your County Road Commission is having a, a meeting about possibly changing up the roads or, you know, adding a lane or whatever. I think that that's really good stuff to know. So we do a lot of local news. Um, we've covered in the on the talk show side, you know, obviously covering the COVID stuff for the last 10 months or so. Right. It's funny um, because right when I first found out about what was happening over in Wuhan, I called our local... Um, a medical director at the um, the health department, and I, you know, this is January, and I was like, so should we be concerned? And he was like, eh, not yet. And yeah. then it it was just, you know, thirty days later that there it is, you know, yeah, yeah. West Coast. It was it was really, I think that for me as being in radio, this is the first time something global like this has happened. Um, that everybody is all sort of on the same page of 
of how much knowledge you have about it. You're starting from scratch, you know? Right, right. I've been around all these years and I've never seen anything like this. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, uh, Terry and I were, my wife and I were traveling in February and on the, on, you know, from Florida and we're, we're coming back and everybody's wearing masks and they're, you know, we're just hearing about this stuff in February, yeah. you know? So, and we're like, I guess we were lucky, you know, nothing happened. So we didn't get it, but yeah, I wouldn't be traveling now. <laughs> I tell you that much. You to get me on a plane yeah. now. Oh man. You know, it's funny that you should say that because I actually would feel better on a plane than I would maybe in a restaurant. <laughs> like, I don't uh, yeah, know. Yeah, because you're in a mask. Yeah, yeah you're in a mask, I'm right? Mask, and I, you know, I just feel like, oh, it's, I don't know. I, in my opinion on everything has changed as much as our information has changed, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, I feel like we all got sort of used to things in the summer and then with the surge again, everybody went, oh, wait a second. And, you know, being in northern Michigan, we were pretty unscathed for a long time. I mean, we had, you know, a handful of cases. And then, wow, that changed in the last, like, 30 days, you know. And all of a sudden, I mean, I know a bunch of people with COVID. And, and it just, yeah, it, it really, it makes a difference when it hits home, you know. Yeah, so that, that's when it really hits home is when you, you know some people that, you know, I've had, had it in my family. You've had it in your family. So, yeah. Yeah. It's it's a whole different experience, and you worry the whole time. Even though, with my family, it was lucky. You know, they they came out okay, and same with yours, as far yeah. as the ones that I know of. And uh, yeah, it's it's. But you, you you're praying the whole time. You know, when they yeah. have it, it's like you know you every day you're worrying about them. So because COVID's such a strange thing too, because it you know one one my daughter one of my daughters is a RN over at uh, the hospital over here. And she said something about, you know, everybody's fine. They send them home and then they come back and they've got respiratory problems, you know. Mm -hmm. So you're always worried about that kind of thing, too, that, right. you know, coming back. So, but anyway, <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, so it's it's been kind of rough for you, I would imagine, with this. As far as being in news, I don't think it's exactly the, well, it, it could be fun or it could be not fun. I don't know what, what, what way do, do you look at it, I guess. I think it, it's exciting um, to, you know, to be able to be in a situation where I can talk to people who are on the front lines and people who are, you know, uh, having a lot more knowledge about, you know, whether you're talking to people in the legislature or you're talking to um, medical directors of, you know, county uh, health departments or people who are behind the vaccine. I mean, it, that's been fascinating on that end. But, you know, to be able to... It, there's a you you know this Oscar. There's a huge responsibility I feel, and I think that people in the news media um, maybe feel it even more these days because a lot of people don't necessarily trust what you say. Right. You know, right. um, fake news. Yeah, and especially with like social media and how people have been able to just create these echo chambers. I mean, when I was growing up, and just the same as when you were growing up. We had like, you know, three news channels, right? Right, right. <laughs> and, you know, the newspaper said the same thing that the news channels were having and uh, saying. And then your news radio, you know, what you'd listen to it on your way to work or whatever. And everybody was on the same page with what was the accurate description of what had happened. And then I think when we got into a lot more cable news and a lot more you know, um, pundits, you know, people like myself who are a talk show hosts who, who gave their opinions. The and, and then, you know, you're sharing this stuff to a mass audience on social media. This idea of what is real and what is opinion got blurred. Right. And then I that's what I think happened where people say, well, you know, you, you saw it on ABC, but, you know, that they're, they skew liberal, that's fake news, and so therefore this is what I heard kind of thing. And, and this idea of what truth is has really been pressed. Um, and I don't know that people necessarily know what truth is. It's, it's a sad thing to me when people don't trust journalists anymore. Right. And, right. Um, and you know, I'm not, I'm certainly not a journalist, but I try my best to go through the information that I'm given and, and make sure that it's accurate. I mean, I don't know how many times I've seen people, well-known, well-respected people that I appreciate who've accidentally shared things that is not 
not real because it looks real, you know? Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, everybody has to have the story first. That's that's oh, the big yeah. thing. And sensationalism is uh, seems to be the thing, too. I mean, you know, yeah. Any any way you look, any any way you look, it's, it's that way too. I mean, right now the big thing that's going on is ever since the the the, the show of the Crown came out, you know, everybody's okay. interested in everything that happens over in England now. It's like <laughs> it's like okay, yeah, whatever. But uh, you know, now you know, Lady Di, you know, she got killed in the in the car yeah. accident, but she was killed by the <laughs> by the Queen. That's like yeah, okay. Whatever, but but that's the thing. They've got so many things that they throw out there. Yeah, uh, conspiracy theories and everything else that that goes way back to you know John F. Kennedy, you know days. Oh but, my goodness, yeah. But and that's that's the whole thing. Is sensationalism is just ridiculous right now. As far as everybody wants to wants to be out there with their their, their story first, whether it's yeah. accurate or not. So you know, that, well, I I noticed. I mean, the the story that has gotten. <laughs> This is going to sound funny, but the thing that I've gotten most excited about in 2020 was all of those monoliths that were popping up everywhere. You know, those um, metal-looking, um, space odyssey-looking things that <laughs> started out, you know, you found one in Utah, and then there was one in Romania, and then there's two in California. And I was just, honestly, Oscar, I was like, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the aliens are actually coming and all of this yeah. stuff. We can start talking about something else and getting along like Independence Day style. Will Smith is going to come to the rescue, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and uh, Jeff Goldblum. You know, we got to get Jeff, oh, Jeff Goldblum in there, too. Jeff. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I seriously was like, oh, awesome, because that will – then we can all, like, have a common um, – almost enemy that you know or yeah. something could be threatening our way of life and, and we won't turn on each other like we are right now you know yeah i yeah exactly i mean it it, it kind of happened in 9 11 i mean every you know the yeah. Mer americans kind of got together but uh, as far as like a whole nationwide type thing that would be nice but uh yeah, yeah i don't know that yeah and i thought that I, at the beginning of um of you know the the pandemic i really thought that we were headed there because you know you had so many people who were even in michigan with the stay at home order and people going okay yeah we don't want to overwhelm the hospitals but this quickly became so politicized and, yeah. and people, you know yeah. it, the mask wearing became a symbol of you know which party you are you know have allegiance to and it right it just it ruined any sense of of unity i think that we had in the beginning right Right. I mean, there's, there's so many statistics out there as far as people that have not worn, worn mask and gotten COVID and, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, we don't really want to go into that. I don't think, no. but no, uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, so we all, we all pretty much know. And well, most of us do anyway, <laughs> what's going on, but, uh, there's still a lot of them out there. Anyway, um, Another subject. I'm trying to think now. I'm trying to switch here now. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas time. How about yeah. that? Well, you know, th this this will be on after Christmas. So. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> so, how, how about this? Well, New Year's resolution. What do you what do you do? You ever do those, or do you think about those? Or I mean, Oscar, that's like asking me if I have something I plan to fail at coming up. <laughs> that's this. right. I, yeah. I really can't. I don't do resolutions because I. I if I immediate, if I say something and I'm going to start it at a certain point, then I immediately figure out how do I can get out of it. Even if I'm the one that's saying I'm going to do it, it, it's this weird thing I have. So I do like, I do sort of an overall, hey, I'd like to be healthier thing. But um, I think that resolutions just, you know, they can work for some people, but not this person. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I never. Yeah, I'm always doing the hey, I, you you know, you want to lose some weight and you want to get healthy and, and work out or whatever. But I just figure if I just do what I can every day, I don't have to worry about a resolution. <laughs> yeah, mine is mine is I want to kill every ladybug I see. So yeah, Are you, do you have all the ladybugs? I do. Anytime there's sunshine out or if it gets like warmer than 35 degrees we get ladybugs i mean it just drives me nuts so what that's weird yeah well they're those japanese beetles they're not really ladybugs but oh anyway. like the fake ladybugs yeah 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 right. they drive me crazy. i'm watching one right now but anyway 
<laughs> That's what made me think of it. Um, I guess if I had a resolution, it would be to get my dog under control because that's the thing I've been working on all year. Oh, I got one of those too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's she's a mix. She's a mixed mutt that uh, likes to do a lot of different things from a lot of different breeds. You know, the Chihuahua yeah. part where they shake and they they get real antsy and nervous, and then it's got the uh, terrier part in it where it likes to tear things apart, and and. <laughs> You know, and then it's got, I think it's got a little pit bull in there too somewhere. It likes to chew on everything. But anyway, you know, so yeah, yeah I'm having fun. And then my dog is actually chewing on my hand right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I, we got a cat, so that's even more fun to watch the two of them play. But anyway, <laughs> I keep waiting to have to put a patch on my dog's eye because I'm sure the cat's going to get him eventually. So, oh, no, really? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, do they play nicely? Or they play, they play nicely. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, she she lets him know when she's done. <laughs> well, I have a rat terrier, and he, with our cats, he he just tries to um, he really just tries to herd herd them, you know. But he's smaller <laughs> than they are, and it's just so funny to me to see this. He's the cat, the cat herder. <laughs> yeah, he's a cat herder. <laughs> So, so what's been going on with you? I mean, how have things, I mean, as far as radio goes, I mean, there's not many, like here in Muskegon, I mean, you're lucky because here in Muskegon, there's not a handful of people that are actually live on the radio anymore. So, oh, yeah. I mean, I, not I, even a handful, I don't think. I hit the jackpot, I think, with WTCM. And we, the Midwestern Broadcasting is the oldest station north of Grand Rapids, I think, or Maybe, maybe you guys had one before us, but um, 1941, we powered up, and it's been live and local ever since. And I think it's because it's still owned by, you know, the same family. Yeah, the there Benjamin you go. Family. Yeah. And they just know how important local radio is. So um, I, I really am, am really lucky. I, I know so many people in this world who, uh, especially in media and radio, and they don't have that kind of environment, you know, uh, yeah. where they're live and, and they're able to do what they want on the radio too. I mean, I don't have the big suits coming in and saying, Hey, you got to talk more about this, you know, right. right. It's, it's wonderful. <laughs> That's what uh, a lot of the guys that I've been talking to lately were radio guys that I knew from the eighties and nineties. And that's when we had you no know, restrictions and we had a ball. We just had a ball. Yeah. But, uh, but nowadays, you know, like I say, with, you know, you're lucky iHeart and uh, Cumulus haven't come and uh, gobbled you up yet, but that's good that your your owners are, are hanging tough. So Yeah. Well, and, you know, there's it's funny, Oscar, too, because I think, you know, just given the way everybody can, there's so many avenues for people to advertise and stuff, but still, I think radio is holding its own as being a real... Um, it's it's a uh, it's hyper local focused. The DJ's talking about the same grocery store that you go to. You know, I mean, right. we've been really steered into that, and I think it's paid off. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I really do. Yeah, we like I say, I really miss it up here because there's not much left for that here. So, yeah, and I think people are are hurting for it. And you know, there's a lot of different little stations, like the one that I work at, which is a uh, um, a low power. You know, but you can still get yeah. it on the internet. So it's you know. <laughs> Might as well say it's a high power station because anybody can get it. But um, you know that that's the ones that still have know how to have some fun because they're not owned by a big corporation. So, but you know it, it would be nice to get like a regular a regular station that people listen to. I mean, there's there's so many stations that I've worked at in the past that are no longer you know mm -hmm. no longer live. You know they're live so to speak, but they're live from new york or cincinnati yeah. or you know wherever so yeah yeah that's so cool. yeah so anyway so that's a depressing subject too <laughs> <laughs> i keep going to these depressing <laughs> subjects i gotta stop <laughs> that's what, that's what happens to you when you sit at home and you know you don't go out much anymore you know you get you, yeah you gotta find the bright spot <laughs> i know right yeah so yeah oh, would have been nice to have a little sunshine here today, but that would have probably helped a little bit. But, uh, you know, um, now as far as your career goes, now you have, now Steve, I have a face for radio. Most of us have faces for radio. You don't have a face for radio. You can go as far as you want TV-wise, I think. 
I mean, you have you have the intelligence, you have the vocabulary, you have the knowledge, and you have the luck. Mm. So, so you know, TV man, it's calling your name. I can tell no. it. Like, Radio is more fun. Yeah, well, and you yeah. don't have to. I mean, I'm I can wear sweatpants. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> as Radio's I sit so as I fun. sit down here in my basement with my stocking cap on and my uh, um, hunting pants on. Yeah, you know, I know what you're talking exactly. about. Yeah, I get home at like twelve thirty. And I immediately put on either pajama pants or sweatpants. And then I say, well, I can't go anywhere. I'm already in my comfies. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> the best. Yeah, luckily yeah. I have no neighbors because I go out and get my mail looking like this, you know. So <laughs> yeah. maybe an occasional car that passes by and, you know, honks their horn. Hey, it's like I gave him a thrill that day. So anyway. <laughs> Yeah, well, thanks for saying that. I, I do, I you know, I do some freelance work for our local TV uh, station up here, nine and ten. But really, I just I write um, uh, a column for them for their website. Um, but I I don't know. We my husband and I have a production company called Pancake Boy Productions. Mm -hmm. After my husband's love of pancakes, <laughs> and uh, and we do a lot of video work for clients and stuff. But I I love like creating the videos coming up with the ideas oh, and yeah. not necessarily yeah. loving being being in front of the camera but you know I'll do that when we need to <laughs> yeah that that's my problem too I, not that I you know look any good on the front of the camera but I do like doing the editing part of it putting yeah, everything together yeah it is it's the most fun well, you did a lot of that when you and my uncles were growing up you had that uh, wild knifer yeah yeah movie, right? yeah right yeah, that's where it all started <laughs> <laughs> this is a wild knifer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Corey, uh, yeah, his his brother, younger brother, did did a part two, and yeah, and, you know, it kind of grew. Yeah. <laughs> and your I uncle, your uncle you. Randy was was a really really good. Uh, um, I don't know, would, would he be a transvestite? I don't know. Anyway, he wore, <laughs> wore one of my sister's wigs and had one of her gowns on or something, her nightgown on, and was reading one of her Playgirls. So there you go. I mean, how much more? Um, excitement can you get into a movie when you got that going on too? Yeah, I so I watched a clip of this and I had a lot of questions. Um, <laughs> mostly, I mean this this could have been like an early public service announcement about like what could happen if you're smoking marijuana, yeah, <laughs> which yeah. people come and steal your speakers and jump off of your roof. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was you know it's pretty lame stuff that I was stealing. That's for sure, you know. <laughs> You know, your mom was the one that did most of the camera work for us. Did she really? Oh, yeah, a lot of times, especially if I was in the scene. You know, it was definitely your, usually, usually your mom. I mean, oh, we, 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 have a, we have a movie of her. Um, it was called Bus Stop or something like that. And we did where we did this, the stop motion pictures oh, and your mom's yeah. in that. Yeah, and we did, you know, quite a few things. And your mom was in a lot of the movies. We used to use her quite a bit, and she used to videotape quite a bit, too. So, Man, I'd love to see that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, um, you know, your Uncle Mike was, was the most fun of all people. I mean, he, he's he's funnier than anybody that I know. <laughs> yeah, he's hilarious. So, wow. Yeah, because we did a thing um, downstairs, and it was all filmed by your mom. Was We did that uh, thing to the Monster Mash tune. So, oh, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. And your your uncle Randy was playing the piano, being Dracula, and then Mike was playing drums dressed as Igor, I think. <laughs> yeah. <with> the, <laughs> that I was uh, the mad professor singing or whatever, but um, but yeah, it was it was hilarious. It was a lot of fun. So yeah, your where was my grandma when all this stuff was going on? Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, you know your your grandma and your grandpa used to work all the time. We'd go down in the basement, skip school, go down in the basement and make these films. You know. <laughs> skip school they, you, you would get caught though these days if you're making that and it, there's a time stamp when you share it on social media you know yeah well you're yeah well your aunt we are aunt wendy was was one that used to tell on us all the time her or kara your aunt kara yeah kara was yeah. kara was the worst yeah i i heard that kara was the tattletale oh was man she was wendy. she was bad yeah <laughs> that's funny the la di da la di da she used to say that all the time but anyway um <laughs> good old days yeah. yeah but i mean you know i can say with your with your family i go back you know your aunt wendy um taught me how to drive a stick um right. your aunt patty um taught me a lot about music as far as you know she used to we used to go around and pop the eight tracks in and listen to uh you know bob dylan and jeff Tull and all this different stuff that you know she used to love back then 
and uh, yeah, so it was fun. And we, you are, you're right. Patty was one of the one of the videos too that we did. Oh yeah, I remember seeing <laughs> yeah. her in one of those. Yeah, it was with the house that her and uh, your uncle Rick lived at, and uh, yeah, she. She was the she was the sex symbol, and uh, me and Mike got in a fight, and, I, and we fell in the water. Yeah, it was. We both had we both had life jackets on, and it, it would look pretty bad. But you know, it was fun. And I guess I hurt Mike, but I didn't know I did it until afterwards. <laughs> wow, that's good acting on his yeah, part. Yeah, I guess yeah, he didn't cry or anything. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, those were good times. Those were good times. Like I say, the Heinz family they were like my family because we had yeah. a lot of good times. So. But, um, and like I say, I'm really impressed with you though. I mean, I am, I'm very impressed with you as far as, you know, as far as you've gone and, and you and your husband work together so well on this kind of stuff. And I've seen a few of the videos that you've done at different stores and different locations and they're, they're, they're put together. Wonderful. I mean, they're great editing and everything. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's really, people don't realize how hard it is to get the audio and everything just right. And, you know, nice. So. Yeah. Well, that's where my husband is. I mean, he's he's so good at that stuff. I mean, he and he wants to do that kind of stuff. That's what he loves. But yeah. for me, I'm just like, hey, let's do this. <laughs> and yeah. then he doesn't mind doing it. So there yeah. you go. Well, a lot of fun. Like I say, you got to get your mom to get her back into to doing some filming, you know. <laughs> well, I know. We should. Now that I know she knows how to use a camera, I'm going to call her a lot more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She had it. She held it pretty steady. I remember it was pretty steady, as far as I remember. But anyway, yeah. So, but uh, hey, I appreciate talking to you today. Hey, you too, Oscar. It's been great to hear from you. I love your show. Oh, hey, thanks. So you you can listen now and hear yourself finally for a change, right? Oh, that's a you know I I hate to hear myself on the air. Did you feel like that too, where you would hear your voice and you'd turn the channel right away? <laughs> <laughs> No, because I like to hear how many screw ups I made, so I could, you know. <laughs> no, I get real ner- neurotic about that, so I don't listen to myself at all. Oh, if really? I, even if I'm on like a commercial, I'm like, nope, you got to move it. Yeah, well, you know, the last, the, probably the last, I don't know, four, three, well, three, four years in radio, uh, that's all I did was, you know, record ahead of time. So, yeah. So it was like I'd record on a Saturday and listen to myself on a Sunday, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, that I, no, I, I'll never do that. But I will tune in to hear you and how you make this sound good. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give I'll give it my best shot. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right, well, Crystal. I really appreciate talking to you, Chrissy. I I just always called you Chrissy, but is that is that? Do you like Chrissy or no? Oh, I don't mind Chrissy. Um, they're like my uncle Doug. Yeah. And, uh, and my grandpa. Those are the only two that really call me Chrissy. But Wait. I. I don't mind it. Maybe that's because I heard it from Doug so many times as far as yeah. Chrissy. Yeah. I've said that before. Like, Doug is kind of the only person who can call me Chrissy and Grandpa, but I don't mind. Oh, okay. You know, I'll call you Crystal. Like, you can call me whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, your your Uncle Doug, yeah, I've had him on a few times, and he's he's always he's always hilarious. I always thought yeah. Doug should have been... Um, he should have. Been, he really should have pursued acting because he's really good at it. And he's so good I, at it. I, I've got a video that we did. Oh man, it was probably 10, 15 years ago, and um, it was over at uh, the Buckley. I don't know auction or something like that. Okay. And it was like all the the um, tractors and trailers and stuff oh, like that. The old engine show. Yeah, the old. Well, no, it wasn't the engine show. It was. It was not we went to that one too i videotaped that one with mike but um anyway he did a, like a play-by-play and he just come he came up with some things at the top of his head that were just hilarious so it's like i mean i'm holding the camera and i'm laughing the whole time so you see the camera shaking you know so <laughs> he's a funny guy funny yeah guy. he is so anyway um all right well Thank you once again. We'll, we'll we'll say goodbye this time. I promise. All right, sounds good. <laughs> Thank you. Take care and uh, good luck with everything. Hey, you too. All right, bye bye. Hey. 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 Hey.